Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. Okay, so Chef Manny, you know what I love about Memorial Cooking Innovations? It's that we explore foods, and learning about foods is making me a better dietitian. And that's a good thing. That's something to be proud of as well. Like, for example, an acorn squash. You know, people in East Texas, we don't know winter squashes like these. You, you have all these squashes up here. Tell us about these. Well, you have your butternut squash. You have your spaghetti squash. I mean, these are, you can buy them locally. They're, this time of the year, they're mm -hmm. around. People think they're decorations, and yeah. they're not decorations. Well, they can be. They but, can be, yeah, but, but they're, they're great nutritional. Foods. Yeah. yeah they're, it's got a lot of nutrition, but we can make stews. We can make soups. Mm -hmm. We've done it last year on the show, and we, yeah. it was very popular because we always get one or two that come back months later it saying, is. can you repeat that show again? Or, yeah. So, I mean, this year we're just going to do this. Okay, so tell us what to do with this guy. Okay. Wash it really, really, really good, okay. which we did on this side. Yep. Okay, and then what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to trim each side. Remember, we don't want okay. it to roll off, right, yep. Tim? Yeah. So if you don't mind, i got my knife here. And this guy is really, really hard. He is hard. Now, um, I, I, have a, I have a suggestion on this. What is that, Tim? Well, these guys are really hard. Now, I mean really <laughs> hard. And a hacksaw can cut these guys. Oh, I'm sure it can, but you know what? We don't all, always have a hacksaw. Sorry, okay, Tim. So you want to use a good sharp knife? A good sharp knife will right. do it. Okay. All so right. hold on to it real tight. Okay, what we want to do is we want to do this first. Okay. Cut one edge. Okay. Flip it over. Make sure it doesn't roll. Just There's yeah. always because of this. Yeah. And then we're going to cut the other edge. You're using a sawing motion, motion, motion. just like a hacksaw. Hacksaw. Okay, so it's nice and flat. Now, again, make sure it doesn't move much. Okay. Just put it right down the middle. Once yeah. you get it, just twist it. Bingo. Okay. All right. There you go. Now, we're going to stuff this with a nice ground beef stuffing and some brown rice. Mm. And then we're going to do a lentil soup. And let okay. me explain to you why we're going to go ahead and do this. Because it's going to okay. take about 40 minutes to cook. So we're going to start with this first. Then we'll start with our lentil soup. Okay. And then we'll go in with the stuffing for it. By the time everything is ready, we're ready. It comes out together. Okay. All together. We don't right. have to wait for one or the other. Okay. Okay. So, if you don't mind, Tim, yeah. take those seeds out. You can put the seeds here. Okay. I got your little spoon. Don't okay. scrape too much of it. You just lightly, you want to take all the seeds out. Okay. Choose a squash with a smooth, dry rind with no cracks or soft spots. The squash should have a dull rind. A shiny rind means it was picked too early and will not have full flavor. Select a squash with as much green on the rind as possible. Too much orange means the squash is overripe and it will be dry and stringy. Store in a cool, dry place for approximately three months. Squash can be refrigerated, but it will deteriorate quickly. Store refrigerated for no more than one to two weeks. Now, this is a good example. If you went a little bit too far, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, and then we got the other one. Okay. Took all the seeds out. Okay. All right. So you had a little bit of olive oil, Tim? Yes. I got a little bit here. Okay. Okay, we're going to add a pinch of salt. And I'm, when, you say, when I say a pinch, we don't need much, okay? We just want a little bit of salt. You're starting to sound like a dietitian. Well, you know, you're learning how to cook, and I'm learning how to eat healthy. There you go. That? That's, that's good. Okay, so we're just going to put a little dazzle of olive oil, okay? okay. Just, just, kinda, a, just, just kind of dazzle a little, just a little dazzle. bit. Just a dazzle, and then we can... Clean your hands really good, but then we're just going to okay. rub it, okay? All right. That's it. Pretty okay. easy. All right. And olive oil is good. And, and, you know, we talked about some different ways to do this. Uh, uh, you know, you had talked about, well, you could turn them over and cook them, but you also said something about... Uh, Wrapping them. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. And I got a little bit of foil paper here, Tim. Okay. And the main thing is, is what you're doing is when you put these in the oven, you're creating some steam that kind of steams them. And right? it also helps cook faster. Okay. 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 So we're just going to cover these up with a little bit of foil. All right. Okay. And then we're going to stick it in our oven. And what okay. was the temperature uh, that I told you, Tim? Uh, uh, 250. 250. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and slide them in the oven. Okay, Tim? Okay. All right. We got that oven preheated. Okay. So we're ready to go on that part. All right. Now let's get started with the lentil soup. Okay. Okay, Tim, let me correct you real quick. I, okay. I mean, don't get mad at me because 
Chef Manny, how can I get mad at you? When we did the oven, 250, I just yeah. wanted to quiz you, yeah. but it's 350. It's really 350. Yeah, it is okay. because you want it to cook, but you don't want it to cook too, too long. But then yeah. you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. You want to. So That's why we running. need a, a chef in the kitchen. But you're right, though. I mean, I, I don't know if you were testing me or I was testing no, you, but you're no. good, though. You got it's 350. Me. You're good. All right, so we're going to get started, right? Yeah. Let's I got do my, the lentils. I got my pot yeah. going hot. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Okay. All right. And when I say a little bit, it's a little bit because yeah. we're just going to kind of sear it off, okay? So, and this is something, this is an excellent, uh, you can use it as an entree or a soup, especially in the wintertime coming this up. This lentil you know? soup. You know, people don't know lentils. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm discovering that, that uh, lentils are a legume, and in fact, they've been part of the human diet for 15,000 years. I believe you. People have been eating lentils. They started eating lentils in Mesopotamia. And so here they are. And here they are. I mean, they're wonderful. Um, you know, here in the South, we eat beans and peas all the time. Well, this would be a, a, a pea-like uh, legume, yeah. basically. And what you do with this, you know, even though some of the products or uh, beans and stuff that you buy, you always want to wash them really good. You, you know, really do, because even though they're pre-washed or... You know, I just don't, you know, there's always... Well, th sometimes there are rocks in exactly. these. Exactly. In fact... Espe especially on beans, like pinto beans, red beans, black beans. I mean, you can't see them very well, and you might chew on it. So Break a tooth. Thing, exactly. Yep. So best thing, just wash everything. Well, Nowadays, you, we got to wash everything. Okay. And, and uh, okay, go, go, go we got, ahead. We got that one? Okay. Yeah. So, while well, that's sauteing real quick, I am going to get a little bit of parsley... A little oregano. I got some fresh oregano, which came from your garden. Out of my herb garden. That's okay, good. Let good. me get a little bit of parsley from here. And so this recipe starts the same way as you see us do a lot of other things. You get your onions sautéing until they're, they're smelling good. Uh, and then you, you continue your sauté with your herbs, huh? Yeah. I got a little bit of uh, parsley, so oregano. So you just kind of put all that together. Put it all together because it's gonna okay. all going to go in there. So Now, see, when I made this at home, I did each one separately. But, of course, you know, that's why, that's why I say I, that's what I love about Memorial Cooking Innovations is I continue to learn about foods. Well, the recipe calls for all these spices. And here's, here's a trick to all this. How much do I put? Let's yes. just do a little bit at a time because we're going to taste as we get along. And we, we learn. Through. Yeah, and we, we learn. learn. Yeah. A little bit too much, a little bit less. You know, a little less is always good because you're going to add more. Yeah. But you can't take out unless you yeah. expand and make more out of it. Okay. okay. So that's right. sauteing wonderfully. Then we're going to add a little bit of garlic. Okay. And there's nothing better than, you know, sauteing garlic. This is one of those recipes that we are going to add garlic first. Yeah. Because we're not going to really let it cook too long. You're going to add some liquid to it. And I am. It won't be so strong. Well, and, and uh, you know, another good thing about lentils is, uh, you know, we're used to, like, pinto beans, you soak them overnight, and then uh, you pour that water off, and you still have to cook them for an hour and a half to get them done. These guys, they cook uh, fast. you don't have to soak them, nope. and they'll cook in 30 minutes. Exactly. So, so it's, it's a quick, easy lentil to prepare. So we got our onions that are looking yeah. good, Tim, if yeah. you don't mind stirring that. Smell wonderful. Yes, and then we're going to add our celery. Okay. okay. I, I notice how you cut this small. Small. Yeah. Now you can slice it. I mean, yeah. you, you can make it chunkier. I just like it this way. And I got some carrots also here. Also cut about the same it's size. About the same size. And uh, you know, my thing, a lot of recipes call for a slice, julienne. I just want to make sure when we grab a spoonful that it's got everything. It, it everything fits inside fits the spoon. Fits in the spoon. And it's a similar size to the lentils. The lentils, yes. exactly. Yeah. So if you don't mind mixing that very well. Okay. Then we're going to add a little bit. No, actually, we're going to add the lentils next, okay? Okay. Tim? All right. Looking good. We're going to cook that right. for a minute, get all that flavor in there. And that has some low sodium vegetable broth. Vegetable broth, broth. yeah. All right. Now, you can also use uh, chicken broth, low sodium, or you can yeah. use beef broth, low sodium. So just use low sodium, okay? You know, this is another good place to use low sodium vegetable broth. And, you know, you've kind of taught us to do this. In, in a traditional recipe, we would have added water to this. But when we're adding low sodium cooking broth, we're not only adding water, but flavor. Flavor to it. So what's in this low sodium vegetable broth that we use so often? Well, the ingredients tell us water, onions, carrots, celery, tomato paste, spices, canola oil, garlic, and sea salt. 
So Chef Manny, on this ingredient label, salt is the least ingredient and water is the most. Okay, that means salt is at the end of the list. So they're adding a pinch of salt to this low sodium vegetable broth. They're doing the same thing that you've taught us to do. We're changing the world one bite at a time, man. And that is good, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, one more thing I want to say about this label. You know, when you look on here, it says calcium 2%, iron 1, 2%. Well, that doesn't sound like very much. It's not much nutrients in this. But what's not on this label is the beta carotene that's in the carrots or the phytosterols that are in the onions. Can you tell I get excited about this yeah, stuff? Yeah, you do. The folate. And that is true, though. Folate in the celery, you know, and so you're you're using this to add for the flavor. Mm -hmm. But we're also adding uh, health benefiting uh, health beneficial nutrients. And that's perfect. <laughs> okay, and that's good. And that's and there's a lot of stuff that's good for you that they don't always tell you what yeah. they have. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Look, looking good. Looking real good. Looking Smelling real, good. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So now you haven't put your herbs in there yet. Not yet, because we're going to taste in just a few minutes. Okay, we put okay. a little bit of herbs. Remember, yeah, I told you yeah. you can put a little bit at a time so you can taste it. I'm with you. Okay. Don't put too much, because then you Can't know we got to start. Yeah, yeah. start okay. all over. So okay. it's better to add little and add at a time than okay. putting too much. So okay, we're going to let this cook a little bit. Now we're going to get started with the uh, beef. Okay, the for the squash. For the squash. Okay, yeah. good. We got the squash going. Yeah. We got the soup going. The beef won't take that long, All right. and then we'll get going. Okay. Okay, Tim, let's get the saute for the squash. Okay. All right? All right. But first, soup is looking good. I want to taste it, okay? All right. And I know we're just going to taste the broth, okay? Because we know that the lentil is not quite ready, but we want to yeah. hear you go. Now, you know, you always just dip a spoon in there and then taste and... and Whenever I try to do that, it, it burns the top layer of skin off my tongue. Okay, so how is Very it? nice. Yeah, okay. Very so, nice. So that tells you how much, how much more uh, herb to add. Ooh, that's good. Good flavor, good mm -hmm. vegetable flavor yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. taste the vegetables. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm going to leave it just the way it is. So you're not going to add more herbs? No, I'm not going to okay. add more herbs. Okay. That's, that's just so good. We'll taste it again later on, yeah. right when we get ready to add our tomato. Because remember, we still got one more ingredient, yeah. and that's the tomato. Yeah. So it might smooth out the flavor, and we might have to add a pinch more. And this is an important lesson that I've learned from you in cooking. You know, uh, uh, cooks, when they first start cooking foods, at least I was reluctant to taste. But if you don't taste, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. A lot of times when recipe calls for something like cumin or uh, cayenne pepper, yeah. one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, yeah. and then you add it and then it's Too super much. hot, yeah. that's it. Done. And you don't Just always... Add a pinch. And sometimes those spices are more strong than others depending on how old they are, huh? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we're good. Okay. We're, okay. So here's we go. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Yep. All right, I got some onions. We're gonna sweat the onions real quick. Okay. Now here again, you, you're using a fine dice on these vegetables because you're gonna put it all together inside a squash. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I have my... You know, at home, whenever I'm uh, sauteing the onions and I get the garlic going, uh, anytime someone comes in, Dad, you're cooking. It's like the whole house smells so wonderful. It does. It really does. So, and I got the beef right here, Tim. Okay. Okay, Tim. Now that we got the beef, okay. Now yeah. this one right here is 90-10. 90% beef, 10% fat. And, you know, that's a good point because in your healthy cooking, uh, you, you want as little cholesterol from a red meat like beef as possible, and that's how you, uh, you do it. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're just going to let it combine, marry to each other okay. flavor-wise. Now the okay. recipe calls... You want me to do this? Yeah, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, we saved these herbs. These are basically the herbs that we're going to add also to the, our, our stuffing. Okay. Except for one more ingredient, which is sage. Okay, this time of year. This time, time of year, sage comes out really yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, here in uh, East Texas, we're not as familiar with these winter squashes. We all know the summer squashes, like uh, uh, yellow and zucchini squash. But, uh, but we don't know these winter squashes. And I never knew what to do with these. When I see them in the grocery store, you know, I, I never knew 
uh, what, so I'm glad to, I'm glad to get this recipe. Looking good, Tim. All right. Now Smell let's good. add the vegetables. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of the carrots, okay? Okay. We're going to add a little bit of the celery. All right. You know, when it comes to vegetables, they're always so good. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, we've had that stuffed peppers and stuffed yes. cabbage, but yes. we're going to do something like that with the acorn squash. And it's a stuffed squash. Yeah, okay. So, and then we're going to add a little bit of spice to it, which is mm -hmm. the poblanos. Yeah. Not jalapenos. Remember, the poblanos yeah. are very good. They're dark color. You know, so, I, I go through the grocery store now, and the, the cashiers don't know poblano peppers, and frequently they ask me. Uh, and, you know, you're the one who've taught us to, to use poblanos. I mean, it's just one of those flavors that kind of go good with everything. It's great, yeah. I and mean, you can roast them on fire, we've done. Mm -hmm. You can uh, uh, bake them off. I mean, yeah. just the flavor alone. All right. So we got this going. We're going to add a little bit of garlic. Garlic is so good in everything. You know, what, what I like about this dish, you know, I've heard other people talk about acorn squash, uh, baking it with a little... Uh, sugar and butter, you know, but, and, and but that's this okay. is this is more savory. This this dish is, and it goes so well with this squash. You know, the summer squashes are are non-starchy vegetables, but these winter squashes are starchy. We count them, but put them in the same category as potatoes. Mm, it smells good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that going. Add a, we're going to add a pinch of pepper. And then we're going to add our herbs, okay, Tim? Okay. This is the best time to add the herbs. Again, we're going to add a little bit at a time. We can always cut up a little bit more. We've got plenty of herbs. Because mm -hmm. we're going to taste it in just a minute to make sure we're ready to stuff the squash. And you know when you add those herbs to this dish and the heat starts, uh, starts heating them up, oh, boy, they smell good. Uh, this uh, is when your kitchen starts smelling like... This uh, is, Chef Manny was there. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is when everybody's saying, okay, food is ready, almost yeah, ready. Yeah. So. Okay. We All cooked right. the beef good, so that's, now, that's a good now thing. this is the we fun part. Off. You know, whenever I'm coming through the kitchen in the, in, at the I hospital. I always stop him. Yeah. And, and it's always good whenever you start reaching for those spoons. Mm. Good, mm -hmm. huh? Nice mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you're going to cook this till you get your carrots done? Yes. Okay. Cook it till the carrots are nice and tender. It needs a little mm -hmm. bit more, mm -hmm. which it won't take too long either. Because mm -hmm. that's why we diced them up nice bite size. Yeah. And, and, and basically, you're going to put this in the squash, and everything's cooked. And then you're just going to put it back in the oven just to melt, melt the, the cheese. cheese. Okay. And that's when it will give us time to dish up our soup or lentil. Mm -hmm. Have it. We're ready to go. Okay. So this is almost ready. All right. I got our rice pre-cooked. Yeah. Remember, when we cook rice, it's two to one. One cup of rice, two cups of water. Okay. All right. And you used brown rice in this. I used brown rice. It actually has a nice flavor, nutty flavor to yeah. it. So. Okay, so now we're just going to mix this in together, fold it in. Okay. And then here, just be careful, because I took these yeah. out of the oven, okay? Yeah. They are hot, all right? Oh, they're beautiful. They're steaming up. Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of this. Oh, this smells wonderful. This, these squashes smell good, just the way they are. Let's do this. Actually, we can, we can actually eat here. them. Yeah, let's, put that right put there. put that right over here for you. Just be careful, that is hot. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. This is the same spoon I use for the rice. And what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and drop them in, and we're going to stuff them really good. Mm-hmm. This is a dish that is perfect for that weekend after Thanksgiving when everybody's tired of poultry. You know, you had turkey for Thursday and you'd made your, your turkey a la king or your turkey noodle soup for Friday. And Saturday you want something not turkey. You've got a good seasonal dish here with the winter squashes. But, you know, um, a lot of people like turkey. Every time we have turkey, yeah. people enjoy turkey. Yeah. And it's not, it's not a bad idea to dice the turkey. Yeah. 
you know, if yep. you have turkey left over, yep. dice it up nice and neat, saute the vegetable and do the same way. So you could, you could use turkey instead of beef in exactly. this. Exactly. Yep. So, I mean, you know, I that would be. I about that. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people do. It, uh, you know, one of the biggest things is like turkey again, turkey again. But yep. some people really enjoy yep. Thanksgiving air, uh, time because of that. And this would change it up, actually. Yes. But if you are tired of tired of turkey, yes. do this recipe because it is wonderful. Okay, a little parmesano. Cool. Yeah. It's okay. that Italian coming out in you. And then we're going to add a little bit of mozzarella. Eh? Just, Just a un, pinch of Un po' mozzarella. Eh? Uno po' mozzarella. See, si, see. Si. And right here. And what okay. makes it nice is that it'll make it nice and stringy. You know how it is. Okay. And then what? We're going to go back in the oven. Yeah. We're going to go back in the oven. We just, just want to melt the cheese. Okay. The just beef is hot. The squash is hot. The pan is hot. Yeah. Okay, go ahead okay, and open that go. for me. I'm just going to melt it. Okay. Here, Tim, the soup is... Oh, that's so nice. It's beautiful. So we got some lentil soup. Oh, it smells oh, wonderful. It's beautiful, huh? yeah. Good for a cold uh, November evening. Again, this soup right here, you know what? It's, you know, up north yeah. where they're watching us there. Yeah. Yep. Snowing, nice, yep. something nice warm. You got turkey left over, dice some turkey. Yep. Once the soup is done, throw this, let it cook a little bit more and, you know, add turkey to that as well. So. And you know what nice else, little... Chef Manny? You could put just a sprinkle of Parmesan and on this. And we are going to do this one. Yeah. It, it ties with the other dish and just adds just a little bit of pick flavor to it. And we got this one ready oh, to go. Wonderful. So let me put, okay. get this one out of the way. You know, Chef Manny, I was at Angelina Eye Center uh, here in Lufkin, and the ladies there were telling me they'd watch the show. But you know what? I think they've really been watching you, Chef Manny. Really? That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? The other day, a gentleman uh, came over to the cafe and says, Hey, I saw you on TV, and you, all, you guys are so good because I learned so much. Uh, Miss so Sonia Lankford here uh, uh, called me, and she said, You guys keep it up because I'm really learning a lot about cooking. So, you know, I think people are starting to... Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, Shanae called me the other day, and she goes, Manny, I saw you on TV. That was so funny. You guys are so funny. But And I said, Well, did you enjoy the show? And she said, I sure did. So, hi, Shanae. Well, you know, uh, on this show, we've introduced acorn squash. We've shown you something a little bit different on uh, not only acorn squash, but also with the lentils. Uh, people around here not as familiar with lentils. This is a great dish to do uh, at Thanksgiving or weekend after Thanksgiving. Just the winter, uh, nice comfort food, really. I mean, yeah. if we... If you make try to make this a traditional thing, just like we did the citrus turkey, yes. that people keep yes. asking, you know, when we're going to have that again and stuff like that. And, you know, just encourage everybody to watch, uh, go to the uh, um, Memorial, Web Memorial website, website yeah. and yeah. pull up all these recipes. And one of the biggest ones that we have is that one of the citrus. The you know, citrus turkey is still popular. In, in fact, area. we just had people asking about that just, yeah. just recently. So, uh, well, we want to thank uh, uh, Brookshire Brothers. Definitely. Uh, and also we want to say thank you to the city of Lufkin for uh, distributing our oh, Memorial Cooking Innovations. Thanks to Sodexo for Chef Manny Marini. And thanks to the Polk Education Center for sponsoring us. And, you know, Chef Manny, we keep making things like this. I think we're going to change the world one, one bite, bite at a time. time.